Okay, greeting to you class. Now, let me continue with my, my lecture on computer program. Today, I'm just going to talk about the program now. The program. In the first part, eh, where by, I was just introducing the computer program, computer programming, and what is computer, let me make some correction that I was just using the word grinder instead of blender. So the right one is, must be blender. If you take the orange into the blender, not into the, to the grinder. Now let me continue with, my, with my, my topic, which is now a program. As I said from the previous session that a program, this is a set of instruction. A set of instruction, the set of instruction which tell the computer, which tell the computer how to work or what to do. Now, in a computer, we have another word which is known as software now. This, the word software, sometimes we take it as a program, and these two words, software and a program, can be used interchangeably. You may use the word software, or you may use the word program. Even though people are just using them interchangeably, but they have some slight differences that when you talk about the software, now it means you'll be adding another component like the, you'll be adding some of the components which are not there in the, in, the, in the program. But the software and the program can be used, or can be used, these two words can be used interchangeably. So you may say software, or you may say program. Now let me, let me give you some, of the, some example of the program which you understand. For you to understand what is programming or what is program, now, let, let me take example of the program. Take, a, take for instance, what you call the WhatsApp. Everybody here understands the WhatsApp application. So, WhatsApp application is one of the program, or is one of the software. Take another example, Facebook. Facebook. This is another example of, of the program, or example of software. Take another example, when you are just applying to come to the uni this university or to any university, use an online application systems like application.udom.ac.tz. Those online application, what you call online application, those online application are also program or what you call Software. Those online applications are also program or what we call software. Number four, you have this OLAS. All of you here are applying for loan. We have the online loan application system. Is another software or is a program? So all these ones are, 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 are programs. So when we talk about the program, that these are the set of instructions which tell the computer what to work, how to work, or what to do. We mean this software, and everybody here understand that these are what we call software. Now for WhatsApp, this must be written like this one. I think you understand it. It is it's just an WhatsApp program. And the Facebook application, the online application, they are they are they are all they are all program. Now this course, which is introduction to high level programming. I said before that this is, or oh, programming is a process of creating a program, creating a software. So this course will be all about how do you create a program like WhatsApp? How are you going to create a program like Facebook? I want you at the end of this class to be able to create your own Facebook, your own WhatsApp your own online application system with any other application program which you understand. So this is all about this course. When we say programming, means a process of creating a program, and we know that the program, these are a set of instructions which tell the computer how it works, and these are examples of the program. 
So you see how this cause is very interesting, that at the end of this cause, we expect you to be able to write at least, to create at least a simple, a simple program. Take example of a calculator. A calculator is also a program. You may write a program, or you may create a program to, to which work as a calculator. You may, you may be having your own calculator. So this is what we call computer program. And this is all about this course that we want you to be able to know how to create program like WhatsApp, like Facebook, application program, all us, calculator, even the ATM machine, even the ATM program. If you go to the ATM machine, there inside there is a program which allow you now to withdraw your, your, your cash or your, 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 your money from the, from the bank. So all of these ones are what we call program, and this is all about this course now, computer programming. Now, after understanding what is a program, let me now explain a little bit of inside the computer. I want to talk about the memory, computer, I want to talk now about the computer memory. There is no way out you can talk about programming without talking about computer memory. Because any program, wherever you are writing a program, you are going to affect the computer, the computer memory. You know that a computer, one of the, one of the functions of the computer is to store data, and the data are stored inside the storage device inside the storage device and the <coughs> inside the storage device and in the computer the storage device is divided into two parts we have the ram and we have the rom the ram this is the random access memory random access memory this is the rom this is the RAM, while well, the ROM is the read only memory. In short, this is a permanent storage. This is a permanent storage. While well, the RAM, this is a temporary. While well, the RAM, this is a temporary storage. I, I, I decided to explain about the computer memory because we said that a computer is a device which accepts data as an input and store data. Wherever you take a data into the computer, the first issue is the data must be stored somewhere in the computer. That's why I start introducing the memory here now. Because the data must be stored somewhere. The data are going to be stored in the computer memory. For that part, or for at, the, at that moment, we say that there are two types of memory. It can be either RAM or it can be either ROM. Now, my interest here is to talk about the RAM, not the ROM. This is a hard disk, which everybody can understand it now. You are going to store things permanently. But I want to talk about this RAM, what we call the temporary storage. Wherever you have a computer and you boot your computer and the computer starts working, anything you are just doing in the computer, is going to be stored or are going to be stored in a computer RAM, which is a working memory. So anything which is stored in the computer RAM, which is the working memory, will be there temporarily. Because if you turn off the computer, you find that those data or those functions which you are just doing will not be, you know, you can't obtain it anymore. But if you store it in the RAM or what you call the hard disk, now this will be permanently stored. And then if you turn off the computer and later on you turn on the computer, you find that everything you are just stored in the ROM or the hard disk will be there. But anything which you are in the RAM will not be there. So at this point we say that RAM is now a working memory. It's now a working memory. Wherever you are doing anything will be affecting the RAM. To store the things in the ROM is an option. And the hard disk is an option. You may want to store it, you may decide to store in the ROM, or you may decide to leave it at the end of the point if you don't want to store your, your data. But storing in the RAM is a mandatory. There's no way out you are going to do anything in the computer without affecting the RAM. So even programming process, 
it affects the RAM because the data you are taking in the computer is going to be stored inside the RAM. And when you want to process the data, the data are going to be processed from the RAM. Then after processing the data, the information you get is going to be stored inside the RAM. After storing the information from the RAM, now the output is going to be taken, the information is going to be taken from the RAM to the output device. So you see, RAM is like an intermediate or is the one which is at the middle of the computer programming. Because wherever you input data, if you have the data, data are going to be inputted, are going to be taken into the RAM. When you want to process the data, data are going to be processed from the RAM. Then after processing from the RAM, the, info, the, the information which is processed data are going to be taken to the RAM. And then this is the data means you are taking data from the RAM, you process it, then after processing it, the information you get, the information you get, here you'll be having the processor now. <coughs> the information you get is going to be taken back to the RAM to be stored temporarily. And then from the RAM, from the RAM, this information is going to be taken out. It's going to be taken out or to be given out as an output as an output. So you see, <coughs> the RAM now become an important and a very important memory as far as computer program is concerned because everything you are just doing in the computer is done in the, in the, in the RAM. Now let me give you a simple structure of the RAM. The RAM is an M by N matrix, which means that it has some M row and, 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 and N column. So you may take this one to be a simple structure of the RAM, whereby this one are rows, while this one are columns. So we have the rows and the columns. So the rows and the column of the RAM now create what we call the cell. This is a computer cell or the cell of the RAM. So you see, a RAM, it has different cells. This is a cell, and this one is the cell, this one is the cell. So everything you see here, this is the cell. Now, when you say that you are taking data into the computer, data are going to be taken into a specific cell within the RAM. Data are going to be taken into a specific cell within the RAM. And when you are going to process the data, the data are going to be processed from a specific cell into the RAM to the processor. And finally, the information is going to be taken back to the specific cell within the RAM. Let me take example, a simple example. You want to add two numbers, x and y, and get the summation, which is the z. Now we say, OK, x, you, if, if x plus y Maybe let's say you get z, that z is equal to x plus y. Now, since x is going to be an input, means you are going to take a number x, and then y is going to be an input. Now we expect that this cell can be cell x, while this one can be cell y, while this one can be cell z. So if you say x is equal to 3, means you take 3 and you store it into the x here. If you say y is equal to 4, means you take 4 and you store it into the y. Later on, if you say z is equal to x plus y, means take whatever it is in cell x, which is 3 now, you plus what is in cell y, which is 4 now, the answer here is going to be 7, and the 7 is going to be taken to be stored in cell z. Then here will be cell z. So you see, whatever you are doing a simple operation of adding two number, whereby you have 3 number x, y, and z, they are going to be affecting the RAM because these numbers are going to be stored within the computer, the computer RAM. So this is what we call the, the RAM of the computer. So I think let me end here for this portion of a program and a, a RAM. Thank you.